Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the particulate nature of matter. This is the first chat chapter of the chemistry IGCSE syllabus. So let's begin. So the first thing you need to know is about what is matter. So basically chemistry talks about matter and if you don't know what matter is, then chemistry would look difficult or would feel difficult. Chemistry talks about matter, how it behaves, the explanations, the predictions. So what is matter? Matter basically is a word that is used to cover all the substances and materials from which the physical universe is composed. There are many millions of different substances known and all of them could be categorized as solids, liquids or gases. And therefore chemistry deals with matter so importantly. Everything with chemistry is somehow related with matter. Either it's predictions of an experiment. We look at what is formed. Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? Is it a gas? Now, these solid liquid gas is what we call the three states of matter. Now, in this picture, as you guys can see below, is about how one can have all three states. And in this case, they're using water as an example. So we have the first picture, which talks about this picture right here, which talks about how ice or water is a solid and the solid form of water is called ice. In the second picture, the water is called as a liquid, is to be known as a liquid a substance. And on the third picture, it is a gas. So basically what it's trying to tell us is that all substances have matter, either solid, either liquid or gas. And these are called the three states of matter and are very important in chemistry. And that's why it is chapter one of the chemistry syllabus. So let's move on. Let's talk more about solids, liquids and gases. Let's look at number, let's look at the first one, a solid. A solid at a given temperature, has a definite volume and shape. This means that at the same room temperature or at a given temperature, all the solids will have a definite volume and shape. Solids increase in size when they're heated. So that's one of the properties of a solid that when they're heated, they expand. And when they're cooled, they decrease and they're called contraction. So they expand and they contract. That is the nature of a solid. A liquid in, in, given, in a given temperature has a fixed volume and will, own, will take the shape of any container it will be poured. So that's its property that it will take up the shape of any container into which it is poured. A solid, um, like a solid, the liquid volume is slightly affected by the change in temperature. But not here, it's slightly. Compared to the solid, it's still slightly, but it is affected by the temperature. And finally, the gas. At a given temperature, it has neither a definite shape nor a definite volume, and it will take up the shape of any container into which it is placed and will spread out evenly within it. So unlike those solids and liquids, the volume of gases are not affected by the change in temperature. So here we kind of also looking at the properties of the three states of matter. The solids, which can change the shape, which has a definite volume. But a liquid can take up the shape of any container. A gas can take up any shape. But a gas has no definite shape, no definite volume. A liquid has a fixed volume. A solid and a liquid will slightly be affected by the change in temperature. So those are the properties of the three states of matter. Liquids and gases are relatively compressible. What does this mean? This means that the volume can be reduced and gases are much more compressible than liquids. So what is the idea between the states of matter? So we're trying to convey that all matter is made up of tiny moving particles, which is invisible to the naked eye. So as you guys can see, it is invisible to the naked eye. And every substance will always have a particle, but different types of particles. 
These particles are known as atoms, molecules, and ions, which will be introduced in the future videos. The particles will move all the time. The higher the temperature, the faster they move. And later we'll get to know that this is called kinetic energy. The heavier the particles move, the, small, the more slowly the lighter ones at a given temperature. So heavier particles move more slowly than lighter ones at a given temperature. So this is where the kinetic theory can be used. What is the kinetic theory? The kinetic theory helps us explain how the arrangement of particles relates to the properties of the three states of matter. So finally, let's explain the three states of matter. How are they related or how do they form? In a solid, the particles attract one, an one another. There is an attractive force between each particle, which holds them together. These particles have little freedom to move and can vibrate about a fixed position. So here we're coming to more details about the state of matter. These are now the properties. If it says, what is the property of a solid? You would say, number one, that they are, the particles are held together and have little freedom for movement and vibrate at fixed positions. Or you can say they are arranged in a regular manner. Now, right here you guys can see is some of the images of a solid and how it could be built. Or right now these pictures are showing us the representation of particles in a solid. So basically every state of matter has a particle. But the particles in a solid is in a very close or packed position. But with the solids and liquids, they have a lot of freedom. Studies using X-ray crystallography have confirmed how the particles are arranged in crystal structures. So solids are arranged in crystal structures. In the liquid, the particles are still close together, but they move around and they collide often. And with the gases, they are relatively far apart and they're free to move anywhere. So here we can see is a diagram of a solid, of a liquid, and of a gas. If you guys can see carefully, with the solid, the particles are very close together. With the liquid, they are close together, but they do collide. And they do have a, a little space to roam around. And finally, with the gas, the particles have a lot of space to move around and they're free to move anywhere within their container. So here are a diagrams of the states of matter and it's important to know how they look as they can be asked in the exam. So now let's look at the changes of state. Previously, when I introduced this topic, we saw how water has all three states. But there is the change of state and how one can change from one matter to another, from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, liquid to solid, solid to gas, gas to liquid, and so on, so forth. So we use the change of state. We have the kinetic energy to a kinetic theory to help us explain this. For example, when a solid is he heated, the particles vibrate faster. They gain energy and help them push further away. And this will cause them to increase the volume of the solid. And the solid therefore expands. That is the reason between, uh, that is the reason why the solids expand when they're heated. Now, let's look at the changes of states, how a liquid can become a solid. The first one, first thing you need to know is that they have the melting points and the boiling points. And the melting point is basically a temperature at which the solid has melted. This is the exact temperature is when a solid melts. Okay, this is what we say the melting point of a substance. So as you can see in this diagram, if I just quickly zoom in here, we have the elements and their melting point and their boiling point. So the boiling point is when this, uh, the melting point and the boiling point is related. So um, that's basically different from each substance. Now solids have a high melting point and have a stronger force of attraction between their particles. 
and those which have low melting points um, are also um, compared to solids. So basically, the solids have a much higher melting point. So you guys can see currently um, we have a picture right here on how that's an unusual state of matter. So this is a crystal, a liquid crystal in its state of matter. So this is the flow of liquids. So this is how something can change its arrangement. So every substance can change its form from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. And that's what we use the kinetic theory model to help us explain this. So here we have a few uh, terms that are used in chemistry. When we move from a solid to a liquid, then we have a melting. From liquid to solid, we have freezing. From liquid to gas, we have boiling. And from gas to liquid, we have condensing. And then finally, from gas to solid, we have subliming. Okay, so this is how the um, change of matter takes place. This is the terms that take place. So right here, we have some more curves to show how or when a substance can change its state and it's further emphasized, but we'll not go into that that much deep. Then we look at diffusion. Diffusion, what is diffusion? When you walk past a cosmetic counter in a department store, you can usually smell the perfumes. Now this perfume, a scent, okay, is the spreading out of gas, okay? It's spreading, the gas is spreading. How do you smell the perfume? It's because it is spreading. And this gas is therefore called diffusion. This is diffusion. Diffusion is the spreading of a gas. Okay, and diffusion also takes place in liquids and also takes place in gases. Okay, so it is it takes place in liquid and gases, but not in a solid. We now move on to the Brownian motion. And the Brownian motion basically was invented by the Robert Brown, who observed that the fine pollen grains on the surface of water was not stationary. Okay, so it's basically related to diffusion. And the Brownian motion basically looks at how the motion of visible particles caused by much smaller invisible ones is called the Brownian motion. Okay, and uh, was actually observed in 1923. Okay, so there you go. That was the particulate nature of matter. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we will look at the second chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next chemistry video.